fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hail Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Boy! The settlement had consisted of a few small cabins huddled close together in a valley near the Badlands. But the settlement was doomed to destruction. The settlers had left their buildings with fires still burning in the hearths and meals cooking on the stoves to escape the attack of savage redskins. Indians on the warpath, motivated by a white man, found an outlet for their hatred and destruction. Every cabin was in flames. One after another, the roofs and walls fell in. The Indians rode off, disappearing into the west, leaving only the burning settlement and a tower of smoke that served as a beacon for a unit of cavalry under the command of Lieutenant Carter. Help! Help! The lieutenant dismounted and stood beside old I... Jeff Neely, whose pale eyes were moist with tears of rage and frustration. Sergeant! Search the roads as fast as you can! Yes, sir! All right, men, let's search the oh, cabins. Every last one of them. Yes, it's too bad, Neely. But it would have been a lot worse if you hadn't been warned in time to vacate. Warned, yes. Me and my friends got away with our lives, but what's the good of living when everything is gone? Look over here, Lieutenant. This is where my house stood. Look at it. Nothing left but the chimney. It's too bad you didn't get to the fort a little sooner. We might have reached here in time to prevent some of this destruction. Hey, Carter. Yes, Sergeant? I guess Neely was right when he said everyone had gotten away from here before the Indians struck. Uh. No sign of casualties, huh? No, sir. There's a couple of horsemen coming from the west, right over there. Uh, I see them. Tell the men to spread out and hold the rifles ready until we find out who those horsemen are. Yes, sir. Spread out and fire! Hold your rifles and ready! Hey, Lieutenant, one of those horsemen is a redskin. So I see. On the alert, men. There's an Indian coming. Oh, shucks. Sure. There's nothing to fear from one redskin. Nearly your eyes are pretty sharp. Is that man on the white horse wearing a mask? By golly, he is. And look at that white horse travel. The paint is good, but look at that white one. Uh, a magnificent animal. 
Say, call that horse Silver. Lieutenant Carter, that man's all right. I'll decide that, Neely. Silver, are you in charge of this detachment? I am, sir. How and I saw a band of Indians heading west. They rode hard and carried a number of small articles that looked like loot. I think they're the ones who burned this settlement. And who are you? Why do you wear a mask? Aren't you more interested in the Indians who did this damage? I am, by thunder. Well, that mask Take means... my word for it, Lieutenant. This man's all right. He's the one who warned us the Redskins was coming. If it hadn't been for him, we'd all be dead. Oh, I see. We've trailed the Indians and know where they went. I'll have we... a column formed at once and we'll go after them. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. That won't do. What? Those Indians were incited. They're no worse than any other Redskins. There's a lot behind this attack. The guilty Indians will be punished. That won't stop future attacks. Lieutenant, you've got to get at the source of the trouble. Tell me where those Indians went. That, sir, is an order. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I'm not in uniform. Your authority doesn't cover me. Perhaps I haven't the authority to issue an order to you. But I do have authority to place you under arrest. If you refuse to give me information, you'll return with us to the fort and talk to the colonel. Oh, now, Lieutenant... It's all right, all right, Neely. Tonto and I will submit with the understanding that I am to keep my mask and sidearm. I'll make no terms with you. Then we'll not submit to arrest without a fight. Please, Lieutenant, don't start a fight with this man. He's proved himself a friend. He must have a reason for acting as he does. Uh, very well, Neely. Mister, in view of what Neely has said, we'll permit you to keep your mask and guns as long as you ride with us without trouble. All right, fall in, men. Form a column of fours. Sergeant... You're responsible for this mass man and the Indians. See that they have no opportunity to break away. Yes. Mister, you're heading for trouble. We'll take a chance, Neely. I hope it's worth it. Lieutenant Carter permitted the Lone Ranger to retain his weapons and to wear his mask. But there was a heavy guard when he was taken with Tonto to the headquarters of Colonel Richards inside the army garrison. Squad, hold! Colonel has been advised. You'll have to wait a minute or two before you can see him. Very well. Is he busy? Yes. He's talking with that man named Berkey. Berkey? Him inside? Why, Tonto? What's that? Do you know Berkey? Let it pass, Sergeant. The masked man and the Indian are to step inside and wait in the ante room. What about the guard? Remain on duty at the door. Come on, Tonto. Uh huh. Wait right there until the lieutenant comes from the colonel's office. Very well. Otto, Berkey is a man who watched that fire in the settlement burn down. He was with War Cloud's raiders. That's right. Indians ride west. I am get here to fort so quick. He must have left the Indians and come directly here. Probably took a circle route. Otherwise, he'd have met the soldiers. That's right. And what we do? I don't know. It depends on how the colonel acts. We're the only ones who know that Berkey is responsible for that Indian attack. And we can't prove it. That's right. Did you notice where the soldiers left Scout and Silver? Uh Uh-uh. Me notice. All right. Be ready for a fast break. I'm going to lay the cards right on the colonel's desk. He may not like what I have to say. In that case, we may have to make a break for it. You ready? Good. Colonel Richards will see you now. Please come in. Very well. Well, this is the masked man from the Indian you arrested now, Lieutenant. That's right, sir. You're Colonel Richards? I am. I might advise you that Lieutenant Carter went a long way when he permitted you to keep your sidearms. To say nothing about that mask. Who are you? I wear the mask to conceal my identity, Colonel. Lieutenant, you may wait outside. Very well, sir. First of all, I want you to know that you'd better not depend on those guns you're wearing. You're being watched every minute of the time you're inside this fort. I didn't come here, Colonel, expecting to use guns. I came because I have something to say to you. And I'd like to say it in private. (laughs) Seems to me he's got a plenty of nerve, Colonel. Anything you have to say, you can say in front of Berkey. Very well, then. You refuse to supply valuable information to Lieutenant Carter. Why? I wanted no fighting. You and the Indian learned who made that raid on the settlement. You trailed them into the Badlands. Colonel... Tonto and I are not fighting Indians. The Army's sworn duty is to defend this territory from raids. By Indians or bad men alike. Uh, Whose raiding party was that? Uh, Chief War Cloud was... War Cloud, huh? But Chief War Cloud was not with the raiding party. If you want to know who led that war party, 
It was Berkey, the manager's side. Why, you ornery... No, for what? Now, see here. Why, I you... have no gunplay. It was Berkey's idea. Another move like that, Berkey, and I'll do more than crack your wrist. I'll draw my own gun. Well, you just... Shut go. up, Colonel. Colonel Berkey's planning to use the Indians to take control of this territory. He's made a lot of promises to the young men in War Cloud's tribe. They're turning from their old leader to follow him. <laughs> Did you ever hear such a ridiculous charge, Colonel? Have you any proof of what you say? No, sir. Not yet. I rather think it's my word against the word of an unknown masked man. You, sir, refuse to tell Lieutenant Carter who's... where those savages are hiding. Perhaps you'll tell me so they can be disciplined. In view of your feeling toward Berkey, I'd rather not tell where the Indians are. You'll talk or I'll have you and your Indian friend thrown into the guardhouse. That's your final word, Colonel Richards? It is. What are you going to do? Talk or face arrest? Neither. Sorry. Hey, look out! Here, Berkey, I'm used to Colonel. Hey, what's this? What's this? The window tunnel, we brought that way. Let me fix it. No, you come back here. Come back, I say. Hurry, tunnel, out this window. Get her. This way, tunnel, the stables. Man over by the stable. You see him. Hey, what the same hell? You can thank the Colonel for this. Yes, man. Hey! Just sorry about that, soldier. Of course, it's right here. It's going to be a tight squeeze, Toto. Head for the gate and lean low on the saddle. Uh, be, be ready. Hey, big fella. Come on, Stop them, stop them, stop them, The gate. Watch it, Toto. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Why did you let that man in to see me with the sidearms? Well, it was with your permission, sir. We had guards. Guards. He literally threw Berkey at me, then went out the window. I'll find that masked man. I'll learn more about him if it's the last thing I ever do. Steady, big Take it easy. Well, I think we've outrun any possible pursuit, Toto. That's right. We'll cut south from here. I want to see Chief Warcloud. Well, maybe Berkey go there, too. Yes, he probably will. But we've got to get there first and convince those braves that Berkey is an enemy, not a friend. One silver! Get scout! The masked man and his Indian companion rode hard toward the distant sound of war drums to confer with the old Indian leader, Chief War Cloud. The Lone Ranger's talk with War Cloud was discouraging. Through it, all the other members of the tribe maintained a chant of hatred accompanied by drums. Chief War Cloud, have you lost all influence with your braves? White man, come here and speak with tongue of serpent. Him make Indian think great reward come from fighting white people. Then call your people to the council. Let me speak to them. It no good. You know me as a friend. That right. But other people of tribe think Berkey good friend. Something's happened. Uh, me look outside we walk. Tonto's coming this way and fast. What is it, Tonto? Berkey just come into village. Berkey? Over there. Him come this way. So I see. War Cloud, he's bringing several of the warriors with him. That bad. Look who's here. We've been expecting you, Berkey. Trying to make trouble for me, huh? You bad. You leave village. Save your breath, old man. From now on, I'm giving orders around here. Before I do anything else, I aim to get rid of a couple of my enemies. And I mean you. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. You and your pal are going to be staked out as an offering to the engine gods of war. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Old Chief War Cloud found power slipping from his fingers when the warriors of his tribe listened to promises of power and wealth made by the white man named Berkey. Berkey had the confidence of Colonel Richards and knew he could retain that confidence if he disposed of the Lone Ranger and Tonto. You overplayed your hand when you broke away from the fort. The game isn't over yet, Berkey. Well, it is as far as you're concerned. These Indians are taking orders from me. Tie up this masked man and Tonto. Oh, to the arm. Yeah. Wait. Wait. It's no use, War Cloud. They won't listen to you anymore. My braves, he speaks with voice of evil. Take off your war paint. Put on your weapons. We must live in peace. The Indians are undecided, Toto. I don't know whether to listen to their chief or to Berkey. How we show Indian the chief right, Berkey wrong. I don't know. The old man who speaks to you. The old man who's afraid. And what's he afraid of? Where's your enemy? Where was the enemy this morning? There was no fight because the settlers fear you. And it'll be the same at Painted Post. Tomorrow morning, I offer you more wampum, tobacco, blankets, and beads when we go to Painted Post. I'll make prisoners of these people so they don't stand in our way. Wait. Before you make us prisoners, you'll hear what I have to say. Otto and I came here in peace. We have eaten at your council fire and smoked the peace pipe with your chief. You can't make us prisoners without bringing down the anger of your gods. If you want a new leader, your council shall decide. Council has decided. And War Cloud is no longer welcome. He no longer has a place in this village. It is the law of the tribe that he shall be allowed to leave and take with him all those who want to follow. That not good. Me not want to leave. You've got to do it temporarily, War Cloud. You've got to get away from here. You must trust me. Ah, uh, me trust you. Indian, do not know what to say. Don't listen to that man with a mask. He's an enemy, and he must be put to death. Is this a friend who tells you to go against the law of the tribe? No, no. That was a mistake, Berkey. These people have traditions. You're going to lose their confidence if you don't follow the rule. My people, you want no leader. You want white leader. You have chosen. I abide by choice. Before the next sun rises, I, the old one, will have gone. Berkey knew better than to try to stop old War Cloud when he left the village with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. He was forced to stand by while the three rode away in the moonlit night. I don't matter. They'll probably warn the people that painted posts, but so much the better. Sure. <laughs> so much the better. Braves will think even more of me when they take another town without resistance. Go on and warn the people that painted posts. See what good it does you. It was two hours after taps, but light still burned in the officers' quarters where Colonel Richards met with Lieutenant Carter and several others under his command. We can discuss the Indian situation all night, Colonel, sir. But there's one thing we can't get around. What's that, Carter? The Indians are becoming increasingly troublesome. Do you suppose there's any truth in that masked man's accusations? You mean about Berkey? Yes, sir. Nonsense. Well, Berkey has spent a lot of time in Indian country, sir. He knows them, and he's given me valuable information concerning them. Understand, gentlemen, I don't admire Berkey as a man. But the accusations of that masked man are too far-fetched. I can't give credence to them. Something's going on outside. Open the door. See what it is. Yes, sir. Sergeant of the Guard just brought this old timer to us. Got to see the crew. Got to see the crew right away. Come in. Close that door. Yes, sir. Now then, what do you want? Colonel, I have a message for a masked man who... A masked man? Yes, sir. A man who rides a white horse? Yes, sir. That's the man. I want that man. Where is he? Please, sir, if you listen to me, you'll find him tomorrow. Tomorrow? What do you mean? The engines are going to make another attack. What's that? Where? They're going to attack Painted Post. War Clouds Indians? Yes, sir. The masked man says if you go where I take you, 
You'll be able to intercept them engines before they reach the town. Where's that? Uh, I'll have to serve as guide if if you don't mind, sir. Now, if this is a trick... Oh, no, sir, it's no trick. I give you my word, you'll learn a lot of things. You'll also see the masked man. I see. What do you think, Carter? Well, there's nothing to lose, sir. Huh? Uh, Colonel, the masked man told me to give you this. What? He didn't know whether it would mean anything to you or not. What's that? A bullet? Yeah, a cartridge. It's uh, made of silver. What's that? Did you say silver? Yes. Silver cartridge. Carter, I Colonel wonder... Richards, I've heard of a man who's known as the Lone Ranger. He identifies himself with silver bullets. And he wears a mask. That's right. Not only that, he has a white horse he calls silver. My thunder, that accounts for it. That accounts for the way that masked man and his Indian friend got out of my office. His Indian friend? There's another point. The Lone Ranger's supposed to travel with an Indian. The man who was here was the Lone Ranger. Why, in the name of goodness, didn't he say so? Uh, he wasn't sure, sir. Wasn't sure of what? He didn't know whether or not you'd ever heard of him. Heard of him? Of course I've heard of him. Who hasn't heard of the Lone Ranger? And he told you Perky was behind this Indian trouble? Orderly! Yes, sir? If this man is hungry, feed him. Then put him up for the night. Yes. We're going to ride at daybreak. Pass the word. <laughs> There was action in the fort at daybreak. Horses were saddled and men mounted up in battle gear. Colonel Richards himself was in command. The gates swung wide, and a moment later, a double column of troopers headed west toward the Badlands with a lone ranger disguised as an old man setting the route. morning was well advanced when the troopers came out of a woods and met Chief War Cloud and Tonto. The colonel and Lieutenant Carter recognized the Lone Ranger's companion and signaled a halt. Detach Come on! Ho, ho, ho. While they talked, the old man who had been riding an Indian pony disappeared among the trees. War Cloud, you say your people have chosen a new leader? That's what War Cloud say. Is that right? Him white man. Him name Berkey. Now, sir, you must believe it. You have War Cloud's word as well as the statement of the Lone Ranger. Look over that way. Indians come. Colonel, look to the west. Redskins. I see them. Tonto, where's your masked friend? You see him plenty soon. That old guide told us. Oh, where'd he go? I don't know, sir. Those Redskins are coming fast. Form a skirmish line. Prepare to meet those Indians. Form a skirmish line. Are those your people, War Cloud? Those my people. Them not like war. <laughs> They're coming in a way that asked for it. <laughs> there, masked man. Colonel, look there. That's the man. And the horse. That's the Lone Ranger. You, sir. Colonel Richards. Those Indians are on the way to Painted Post. But we're in time to intercept them. Please listen to me, sir. Those Indians don't want war. They've been misled and misguided. Don't blame them. Blame the man who's leading them. A man named Berkey. I don't see Berkey. No, you don't see him, but he's there with the Indians. He's dressed as one of them. Tell your men to hold their fire. The Indians won't fire on soldiers unless your men start it. How do you know? Because I know War Cloud and I know his people. Hold your fire until ordered. Pass the word. Hold your fire until ordered. Watch those Indians. They've seen your men. The Indians reined up in a wide line, facing the troopers who held their carbines in readiness. For a moment, it was a strange tableau. Troopers and Indians face to face across an open space of 50 yards. Each force waited silently for the other to make a move of aggression. Then the silence was broken. Come on, Silver! The Lone Ranger raced toward the Indians and reined up, facing the center of the red man's battle line. Oh, Silver, oh, easy. Steady up, big fella. Easy. Where is your leader? Bring out your leader and let us see his bravery. We are War Cloud's friends. See? War Cloud is on this side. Where is your new leader? Is he afraid to step forward and meet the followers of War Cloud? The Lone Ranger dismounted. Oh, steady, took steady. off his gun belt and hung it on his saddle. Oh, right there. Then he spoke again. I am unarmed. Let your new chief now step forward. Why does he not command you? Why does he hide behind your front ranks? Must I, unarmed, go among you to meet him? Come on, Berkey. 
Come out, or I'll come after you. The Lone Ranger waited half a minute, then advanced with long strides toward the Indians. Berkey, knowing that to show himself would mean instant capture by the troopers, became panic-stricken. Then he jerked his horse and bolted to the rear. Get me through there! Get there goes your brave new leader. The man who was to make you so great. An Indian gun barked once, and Berkey fell. Oh, Silver. Oh, he's a big fella. Colonel, the Indians have taken care of Berkey. Your courage in going unarmed among them showed the Indians what a craven coward they'd chosen as their leader. What I did took no courage, sir. I know those Indians. War Cloud? They're raising their hands to you. They want you back. Go to them. They've learned their lesson. Them not learn lesson until all damage paid for. You, soldier. Yes? My people will rebuild houses for settler. It is promised. It'll go a long way toward future friendship. It will be done. Hooray! As for you, sir... I hope, Colonel, the Indians will have a chance to make good their mistake. They shall have it. And uh, as for me, I too made a mistake. I hope I shall be forgiven. I didn't know who... We... You... We all make mistakes, Colonel Richards. The smartest of us admit it. Come on, Silver! Well, of all... Well... Hmm. Lieutenant! Yes, sir! Pass the word to form ranks! Right! Form ranks! Call the two! Form ranks! Call the two! We all make mistakes... That's what he said. I wonder if the Lone Ranger ever made a mistake. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>